And it looks like we're live. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Honey Badger Radio. My name is Brian. I'm here with Allison. And this is, well, I just changed it to like a dating show. You think? Yeah, because it's about a man admiring a woman and All right. essentially like cursing the world to uh, a fiery death because of it, I guess. I mean, so uh... yeah. Well, in this case, the woman didn't have a problem with it. But No, but uh, there were women. other women that, that did have a problem. Oh, there, with it. there were other women yes, that have the, a problem with it. There was oh, definitely the a woman too. who had a problem with it. I bet it. the comments will be entertaining. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I didn't really look at them, but yeah. Mm. So I, I'm, I, I, I agree with I'm going in with fresh eyes here. Okay. But it is kind of interesting because I think there's something related that I was experiencing on Twitter the last couple days related to this and, and a trend that I've kind of been seeing um, with, you know, this sort of like red pill and men's issues and feminists and trad cons, and they're all converging and like wrestling about all of this. And um, I think it's interesting because this is a good example of like what I think the elephant in this case, kind of literally the elephant in the room is, but, um, mm. well, okay, but we'll, first, what is the thing that they're all converging on? Okay. So well, uh, let me, you, you I, I, this might be that. a little, this might be a little convoluted. Okay. So I was looking through some old posts, uh, that I had on Facebook and you have the Facebook memories. And there was one mm -hmm. about, um, was about robot, uh, girlfriends. And, um, the joke, well, it was a kind of a, a done as a joke by Jennifer Daw, you know, Jennifer Daw, the game developer. That's a very, she was very supportive of us and still is. Um, mm. and she, let me see if I can find the original post. Cause this turned to a massive thread. Yeah. So it was about sex robots and she made this old post. Eh, like in 2018, so this is old, and she mm -hmm. said, the year is 2030, most men have sex bots. Women in desperation yell, they don't love you like a real human being. Men will whisper <laughs> back, neither do you. And, <laughs> the, you know, this is 2018, it's a while ago. And I think that mm. since then, uh, at least on the internet space, things appear to have gotten more dire. And I shared mm. it, and I said... My post, my, and my tweet with the image, I said, I am against sex robots and artificial wombs, but women aren't exactly stepping up to change course. So, and I just put mm -hmm. that out there as like a thing to consider, right? Now, <clears throat> I know that this isn't really a show about, you know, sex robots and artificial wombs, but it is, I think, the only reason why we're even tabling a discussion about sex robots and artificial wombs is because of the, the 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 chasm essentially between men and women and and that there are men that are like well i'm just gonna look for you know i'm gonna look for stuff elsewhere and women while they don't want them they also don't want them to go and seek you know like some kind of external solution to their problem and i could see that because the comments under this was there was a lot of rage from women they were so angry about this like um yeah but it was, it, okay so it starts off okay let me want... put it this way it starts off as i don't really care about this but it's like yes you do you're commenting <laughs> like <laughs> well you yeah, can right. die alone i'm like well actually i'm married so it's, this isn't really about me you know <laughs> so what were you gonna say mm. well i was just gonna say yeah women can say um or men need to learn to live without women, but not like that. Yeah, essentially. Well, it, it, you know, it's the same. It's the same issue. It usually is. It's like, you know, MGTOW exists. Women most affected, and it's like, but they literally are avoiding you, and they're like, well, they can't do that. Not on their terms. Basically. All right. So, what was interesting to me about this article is, as you know, Brian, as you know. <laughs> I have gotten into it with, I think, multiple feminist dating coaches now about how men aren't approaching women, right? 
So men are not approaching, or and more and more, each year, less men are approaching women until it will only be the men who the men have, who have absolutely severe no mental fucks to give. Yeah, the yeah. no fucks to give because they're sociopaths and the men with mental illnesses that probably think they're talking to an animated version of the Mona Lisa every time they come up to a woman and and they're and they're they're thinking do you do you have secret messages about the Merovingians to give me you know like men like that that'll be it the absolute certified crazies and the sociopaths that's that's going to be the future those are the only men who are going to approach women in like 10 years cuz it keeps going down each year yeah. That's why everybody's getting hysterical about this. And exactly. I, I approached these, these, or this one dating site, Alex site, who was on Chris Williamson's channel I, and yep. basically said, well, if men, I, I did a survey that he hasn't given me the actual data or what this is based on or any methodology. So I assume that this is basically a Twitter sur survey that he put forth. I did a mm -hmm. survey online and i found that the men who approach women in public uh it, like 13 percent of them end up in a a, a semi-term relationship shall we say mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't hear any alter uh, any alter talk in this so a semi-term relationship um and also i found that those men who approach who still approach women are less risk adverse which Considering that there's an entire body, institution, philosophy, well, I don't even want to call it a philosophy, there's an entire ideology that's trying to increase the risks mm -hmm. from men approaching women, you would imagine that the more risk-adverse men would be the first to stop taking those risks. You know, the guys who just want a quiet life, they want to putter away at, you know, building a family, having a home, and taking care of their own. You know, those guys... They they they're they're probably the first to opt out. The, the, those are the ones you want to be opting in, but they're mm -hmm. the first to opt out. I don't see how this is groundbreaking, and no, um, also fundamentally, what he's saying is if men change either challenge uh, a significant issue, which is a psychological issue, which is an anxiety disorder, or mm -hmm. they change their personalities, and then everything will be fine. So if men change their personalities to be more like dark triad and less risk risk adverse, we'll all be fine. I'm like, no, we'll not. But <laughs> regardless, he, he put it on men. And I said, what about the people who keep telling men that approaching women is a terrible experience for them and to stop? And he, he had absolutely nothing to say to that. Yeah. Like, what do you expect when you tell men that approaching women harms them and that only a creep does it or a horrible person or somebody who's going to be going to pa going to jail, no pass, go. What do, what do you think that men are going to do? The guys who are pro-social are going to be like, you know, I don't want to put women through some horrible experience. I'll just abstain. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And that it, we're basically, we as a species, as a society, have decided to opt out of pro-social men engaging in any kind of mating activity. I'm sure that will go well for us in the future. But anyway, what, what my point is that here we have again, because I, I suspect, I have not read this whole thing, but I suspect that the thesis, and correct me if I'm wrong, and we will, uh, you know, if we get into the article and I'm wrong, I'll eat my hat, your hat that you gave me. Um, I suspect the fact that this woman was okay with this guy admiring her it, the New York Post is going to frame that as a low bar. In other words, men should not look at women. They should not give any indication that women are in in their midst as women. Um, and the low bar is just that he she's okay with him just looking and not you know ha coming over and apparently I don't know having a feel or 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 God forbid saying hello. <laughs> That's my thesis. Yeah. But we'll see. Yeah. Well, it, w it could be the case. Mm -hmm. But the, the, I guess, like, real quick about the thing that I'm dealing with on Twitter, it's essentially like the, the, the red pill guys that are in there, you know, that are sort of like on our, you know, in, in like the MGTOW and the, and, and the incels and stuff that follow me. And I'm saying self described, I'm not using it as a slur. 
I'm saying this is, you know, they, they follow me because they know that I talk about the stuff they care about. Uh, they're all like, you know, all for the artificial wombs and the, um, and the, you know, uh, artificial girlfriends basically. And, and I get it because of the hostility they're getting, you know, from, from feminists and women. I don't even, I maybe not even feminists, just women on Twitter that are angry that they would even entertain an alternative and they're basically showing why these men are, are going this way because they're, they're acting like this. And then you get some, I mean, it wasn't really in my thread, but I have seen online, you know, like, um, I, we have a mutual acquaintance that's on Twitter. That's always fighting with you. I'm not going to name names, but this person is very, very against, you know, the, the artificial wombs and the, um, the surrogacy stuff, and it's going to bring back the Handmaid's Tale and all that. And I'm like, well, you know, if you if you don't want that future, and I don't, I I think it's a bad idea bring simply because I don't think the technology is is as good as people think it is. I don't think it's a real substitute for a human being. I think that the the failure rates of things like freezing your sperm or eggs is very high. So I don't think it's worth it for one where you know, like, because our population is going to collapse. When it's much easier to just be like, hey, ladies, get your shit together. Like, that's all you got to do. I mean, maybe that's harder than, you know, like trying to just like get the technology to, to catch up. But blaming men isn't going to change anything. You know what? This is like the thing that I'm saying is that like you can say, oh, men and women are both contributing to this problem. Yeah, sure. But that the, 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 the men would, would just stop tomorrow if like shit wasn't impossible for them. They would stop tomorrow. But, you know, women are the ones upholding this. So like, yeah, I could, I could, I could, I guess, point a finger at both sides. It's not going to do anything. You, you know, women have to get their shit together. It's all it is to me. It's, and then we won't need, because like, if you do artificial wombs and fucking, um, sex robots, First of all, most of these men don't want sex. They want a companion. a companion. This is like obvious. Even even when men say that, you think Turd Flinging Monkey is really happy with his with his uh, doll? I doubt it. I doubt it because that's not a person. He's not having conversations with them. He's not like talking about his plans or dreams with them. It's just a doll that he like puts his dick inside of sometimes, and, and it, I, it's not a substitute. So. That's not a solution. That's going to that's going to be the end of all of us. You know, I you know um Pearl's um first panel interview on the uh, Audacity Network went up today. And it Karen was on there. And um it was Karen and it, it was recorded a couple of weeks ago. Like yours is going to be up next week. She's like uploading these uh recorded talks. Yeah. Yeah, I heard I saw that. Okay, okay. So, yeah. and, and Karen was right. She was saying, look, you know, we're going to lose everything. Like it's, it, none of this, none of these advances in technology are going to change anything. I'm sorry, guys. I know you're looking forward to robot women, but it's just not going to fix your problem. It's not. And the technology is not there. Plus it's going to be really fucking expensive. Like very few people are going to have access. Why would you live like that? Like you shouldn't have to do that. So I think that it's better that we try to address this, but first we have to Point out the problem. And this article is exactly the problem. So uh, now you'll see. I mean, I haven't read it all, but I know the, the gist of the story. And you'll see. So anyway, this is from the New York Post. Do you want to do any th thing, any things before I get into the thing? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I just, uh, okay. So we, I did open up the fundraiser early in the hopes that we might be able to get that done earlier in the month. So it's at feedthebadger.com slash support. Please help us out if you are able to. Very much appreciated if you can. And if you want to send us a message, feedthebadger.com slash just the tip. Uh, if you send, uh, you send your messages through there, you get the full benefit of avoiding YouTube comment enhancement system. And we get the full benefit of whatever funds you send us our way. So it's a win-win-win. Win. Well, maybe not for YouTube. Win-win-win-win. the Badger. Win, 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 win. Okay. Feedthebadger.com slash just the tip. All right. Send, Shout out to the those, Rumble gang, those, by the way. What's up, Rumble gang? Give us some emojis. All right. Yeah. Send us those, those messages so we know not, we're not crying into the void. Yeah, I have. There were some from yesterday, but I don't know if Hannah read them. She didn't put a done next to it. So 
I'm not sure. But I, I think I'll just pass and see if, if... If you were at yesterday's show, the talk, and you, and you put something through, I see Richard Bierre put something through yesterday, let me know if you need me to read that out, because I will. I don't know if Hannah did it and just forgot to tell us. So anyway, let's get to the article. All right. Response to video of men admiring women reveals how low standards are for some. So this is the New York Post, but it's written by a woman named Mary Madigan. I, she normally writes for news.com.au. So I don't think, because the New York Post is not really a uh, ultra bias. It's not like The Guardian, you know. So this seems a little weird for them. They're normally like pretty moderate on stuff. But I guess when it comes to women, it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, okay. A man staring at a beautiful woman and not harassing her is apparently cause for praise in 2023. A video circulating on X, formerly Twitter, reveals just how low the standards are for men's behavior and the wild things they still get compliments on. So I have the video here. Um, this is not it, though. I may have to refresh this page because sometimes, you know, they'll put, they'll put videos up and then they'll like have them scroll. Yeah, this is the video here. Oh, shit. Hello. No, this is the video here. So there is a woman, this woman here. She's on TikTok, millions of followers, and she put up a video of herself. Can you guess why? I'm just, just <laughs> you know, I mean, just like, look, just, you know, I, I know can't judge a book by its cover. It could be deep, like, you know, philosophical content comparable to Marcus Aurelius. It could be that she's going to, to give us a dissertation on, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the, the Namekian ethics or something, you know. Um, but uh, let's just watch the video and you'll see. This is, the, this is like the video that they, they put out. So, um, and you see there's a man in the background and, and somebody, this is like put up by the person who put the article out. What a true gentleman. You have this man here. Apparently could not help himself. Could not help himself. What a true gentleman. Um, are you sure he's not wondering if that's body paint? Well, he, it's, it's, he's probably got to do a double take, but you shouldn't be doing that as a man. You shouldn't even put, be looking at women, no matter what they're wearing, okay? It's not an invitation. As, as Dave Chappelle says, just because I'm dressed this way. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but just because he's is, making is, these motions and his eyes are looking that way, aren't we making assumptions about his intent? Well, maybe like, the woman who wrote this article is a telepath and she knows exactly what he was thinking. Because honestly, like, okay, let's see. Let's see it again. Let's see it again. All right, we'll go back. Let's see. Again. So here she is. He's smoking a cigarette. He looks like he's in pain somehow. Do you see that? He, well, yeah, because he probably thinks I don't have a chance. <laughs> That's, I, 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 um, I feel that feel. I mean, I don't know. If they, guys, fellas, if you're in the chat, I mean, do you understand that, that body language? What does it mean as a man? Okay, so the caption reads, a cringy video showing a man leering at TikToker Barbara Gambe, com, gambatase, gambatesas, but through a window. So she's like basically okay, doing a here's TikTok thing. video. All right. And he's Your looking ass, at her through the window. But what you didn't that? squeeze yourself into that skin tight outfit not to show off your ass. You're showing off your ass no, to your followers. No, it's incidental. So it's, it's, it's not Don't a problem. Don't you accidentally put on tight ass pants, Allison? No, because they're very uncomfortable. You know? <laughs> I, 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 they would not fit my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I have too much moving to do. <laughs> too much, too much attempting not to face plant on an icy sidewalk to to to, to restrict my range of motion as uh, like that. I mean, I have to at all times be ready to agilely like do a a, a shoulder roll in order to preserve yeah. my spine. But uh, so no, I don't wear. Skin tight, no sausage castings on my yeah, ass. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, you know what? And I honestly, I don't really. You know, I, I mean, she's got a very nice body, so she you can you can understand why she wants to show it off. God blessed her. Um, but 
she's showing it off. And all he's doing is like, and, and honestly, I know you're like, your, your interpretation is, wow, I don't have a chance with that. Um, well, it could just be, he could just be in awe. Like, yeah, he could you know, be in awe wow, of, like, of just wow. The look at the the. I wish the, my friends were here. He just had to tear which to kind of lubricant his he used to get her ass into that case thing. Um, yeah. you know, or 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 like what I originally said, he could be wondering, is that body paint? Is uh, are there is there is there a is there a troop of mimes Should nearby? Should I call the police? Should I call the police to be before <laughs> have the French come to town? Mm -hmm. Um. You know, it's the Cirque du Soleil in the well, city. Well, let's bear in mind, this woman, I don't think, is... is The woman that's videotaping herself is not the one that is crying victim. So okay, I, I no, think like, that she Other is, women are crying victim on her behalf. Other women are doing it on her behalf, right. So, well, watch the rest of the clip, and I'll read the article. But my, my guess is, is that... And I've, I've talked about this already. Women on social media... They they want to show if they have a body worth showing off, they want to show it off. And they do as at every opportunity. Mm -hmm. And they'll go as as far as they can to show as much as they can without mm -hmm. breaking, you know, like the the rules of whatever the website is. They I mean you you saw the thing about Twitch, right? The if Twitch they want meta. to be looked at. That's why they do this. Yeah, they want to be looked at, this... right. They're doing it Bullshit. for the attention you economy. You don't make a TikTok or whatever post your ass in that and you go you turn around and say oh I, but i don't want to be you're doing it to get yeah, attention she is she and, and, and i'm right, sure that she good. knows that you know i'm, I'm sure that she knows She's that for all happy i know with that. okay this could be and this article i think is something that so somebody in the chat says that they think it's staged but i don't think it is i like if a woman looks like that and she goes out in public and starts videotaping the dudes will notice like, there's no way that they needed to hire a guy to come out here and react like that. Like, that, guys are going to notice. It, it, you don't have to do it. It's like, I don't think it's fake. I don't think it's fake. It doesn't, like, again, if you look like that and you go out in public, guys will stare. They will, because that's just the way men are. So it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't require you to stage anything. He's not a crisis actor. He's not in crisis. All right, well, let, let's play the rest of the video. So... He's um, they're they're pointing him out. Is bizarrely being applauded because of the supposed mm. restraint the man shows by choosing not to harass her, and so and and so there's people on X saying this is Sassington MD. Perfect. He looked. He admired. He stole one more glance or look, then simply went about his business. That's how you look at a beautiful person. You think that's. Fair. He didn't approach her. He didn't talk to her. He just looked. Do you yeah, think that's an think unfair that's, um, yeah. assessment? Well, I mean, let's look at it again. Okay, let's finish the whole thing and look at it all again. All right, all right. I'm just reading the tweets that were the response, okay? This is news. But, it, but for some reason, it was viral. CD Belinda says he just looked at her with admiration without disturbing or harassing her. Sadly, this is apparently cause for praise in 2023. So um, the woman who wrote this, her name is uh, Mary Madigan. She's the Listen, one that's, that's not, that's not her. I don't know who that is. She's okay, the one I, that's I, claiming that essentially a man who leers at a woman, but does not approach her. And if he is, if there is some recognition of that, she doesn't think that that's worthy of praise. Now, I, I'm inclined to agree, but I also um, don't think it's any of her business. So I, I don't know. <laughs> no, but the thing is that, um, that what they're implying is that, I don't know, so many men are out there like yeah, monkeying onto women or, and all of this other crap or, or approaching. But here's the thing. This, wasn't that whole TikTok trend well, I'm saying, like, just e looking? even if he approached her, I don't. Well, yeah, what's wrong bad? with that? Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, Is that like some sort of horrendous thing? What's see, your name? And this again? goes back to date site guy. This this is what, what? I mean. Like, the, yes, I know. Not approaching, just looking at a woman, should also be cause for shame. So when when yes. when date site says, "Why aren't men approaching?" Well, men can't even look. 
They can't even yeah. notice some, who's in. And it's not like he was out there going, I'm going to stare at women today. He was out there doing God knows what. And a woman happened to walk into his view. How, what was he supposed to do? Put out his eyes? <laughs> what? Okay. So uh, let, uh, could you see the name? Uh, what's the name? the name of this woman? Yeah. Oh, uh, the, of the right, Mary, uh, Mary Madigan. Right here. News.com. New com York. AU. Times. Yep. I will search her. Search for her. Okay. So it comes right up. Uh, Mary. Ma <laughs> Sorry. I, I don't mean to laugh, but um, there she is. So mm. Mary began her career working for ex Vogue editor in chief Kirsty Clements and has since done everything from PR tutoring at the University of Notre Dame. She has e even had a brief stint as a world's worst personal assistant what mary's most passionate about pop culture fashion and whatever is making women mad <laughs> she's a rage farmer and um she looks like she would get a bonus seat at uh spirit airlines um let's see yeah, so that's the person who wrote it. And what are here are some I guess some of her articles. Uh, why this photo a... is making people feel old? Pics reveal that Aussie what Aussie men really like. Popular creators reveal how her cellulite and soft body has helped her. Ugh. Um, okay, let's um uh you know what? Let's get back to the Yeah, let's we'll get go back, back to the this. article. It, it, this seems pretty standard. Pretty standard man thirsty insecure <laughs> woman. Right. All right. I, and I don't mean that as like a, I don't mean that like a pick me thing. It's just an, it's like that. Do you remember the, uh, do you remember the gay man from Mel, oh, Mel magazine? magazine? Yeah. Who's like, Miles I Klee. totally don't, I totally don't desire a firm, a, <laughs> a, a firm pair of pecs over a six pack. I don't want any of that's not something I want. I don't want nice broad shoulders yeah, yeah. on a muscular <laughs> masculine. I told I don't dream about that. Why? Well, I, I don't I don't wake up in the night shivering with the thought of that man's hands all over my sweat. body. In a cold sweat that I don't and it's like <laughs> you uh the queen doth protest too much shall we say yeah and i think that this is just this is thirsty she's either thirsty for attention or thirsty for a guy and yep. uh yeah um and instead of just acknowledging her failure well who knows maybe she's married all right let's go Ma let's read all oh, this mary madigan somehow i doubt it yeah but let's mary see. madigan that's what i'm talking about yeah, yeah. Um, okay, a video circulating on X, formerly Twitter, reveals just how low the standards are for men's behavior and the wild things they still get compliments on. The clip was originally posted by influencer Barbara Gambetesa, Gam Gambatesa, Gambatesa, that's it, who has amassed over 3 million followers on TikTok and was then reposted on X. Ooh, I wonder why she has so many followers. Who could, who knows? <laughs> The video was meant to be about her showing off her graduation outfit. She chose a gorgeous, chic, white matching number, but it quickly became about the man in the background of her video who stole the show. <laughs> she was just showing off a cute outfit, Alice. No, nothing else to see here. What are you looking at? What are you looking at? What are you looking at, you pervs? Um, I hate that. I, I, I hate that. It's so... It's so obvious what's going on. Yes, there are women who he, like to He could have been clothes. gay. He could have been like, you're not a winter. Lady, yeah, maybe. Winter. He could have said, though, <laughs> pinstripes are so out. I mean, it's possible. <laughs> I don't know. But somehow, yeah, I, but I, I think he was say. just like, yeah, look at that. You're interpreting. Like, We're all interpreting this guy. Yeah. Well, it's true. According it, to... It's true. Um, all okay. right. Like, uh, and, and then the other thing is that uh, what I mean by this is Okay, there, there's, there's a lot of possibilities for why this woman wrote this. She genuinely thinks that men shouldn't look at women at all. Yes. Even when women are wearing something that you have to squint to see if it's not body paint. In other words, there's no way that this woman doesn't want to be looked at. There's no way he, she wore this in order to be inconspicuous 
you know, in order to just blend into the crowd. In order yeah, for nobody no to way, notice her obviously. existence. Yeah, there's no way. She, no, she did that because she wanted to be looked at. And she knows she wanted to be looked at, which is why she's okay with being looked at. But then we have Mary here, who's just, I mean, it's like the, those, um, those, pic- those um, cartoons where there's two people getting it on. And, um, th- and it says, this is consent, but did, do you, it, but did you ask Jesus for his consent to your premarital sex debates? You know that? Like, did you, come on, Barbara. Did you ask Mary for for her consent before you exposed your ass in such a way that you would get appreciative looks from men? I mean, Mary just is pretty freaking upset about this. She's pretty now. Is it because she's so worried about Barbara, or is it because Mary looks at Barbara's incredible ass and says, "My ass isn't that incredible. I would never get that attention by showing it." I don't think she deserves it either. Yep. So is this is this genuine concern? Mary, are you genuinely concerned about Barbara and we'll women to, in general? I, I'm not sure. We'll have to read or more. are you jealous? Yeah, there is that. Okay. Or, or is something about men interacting with women that that gets under her skin. Um okay. Well, it could also be jealousy. Yep. I That's doubt true. that it could with, be. It's, it could it's be, entirely she likely. She could be jealous that she's not doing it and he is doing it. That, that he's close enough to notice. I don't know. So yeah. it says okay. um, he is smoking a cigarette, admiring the woman, bluntly staring. And at one point, he touches his forehead as his eyes seem to linger on the woman. That is barely no. Barbara. What? Seem to linger on the woman. You know who this woman is. Yeah. <laughs> admiring barbara say her name mary say her name say the name of the woman who is getting ma- uh, admired yes right that's just weird the way she's just switching to if, the woman if a woman goes out in public and wears an outfit that she thinks flatter is flattering and men do everything in their power to avoid looking will that woman then feel unattractive Probably. Like, what kind of climate do you create? Because let's face it, like, if a woman wants, and, and men will do this in their own way, too, so I'm not even making this exclusive, but if a woman wants to flaunt, you know, what she has, and I, you see it, like, you go to a party, you go to the beach, you go, you know, wh- where it might be appropriate, you'll see that. Um, if men are, like, trained or conditioned to basically make like, allowing these women to be to know that they're being see, looked at if they if they do everything in their power to avoid it or they just avoid women period like they just don't go where to to beaches anymore they don't go wherever there might be women you know like wearing i don't know little um what what's that going to do like are those women going to like there there are there are uh, meetups right singles singles meets mm-hmm. right men don't show up Women go to them and they're like, where are the men? The men don't show up. Like there's been like a, a, a you know, a pattern of this where women are like, we're going to do a singles meetup and we're going to meet up with a bunch of guys and pair off and they go and there's like no men. And it's like a bunch of mm. women there. And they're like, mm. what happened? Really? And it's like, well, I don't know, ladies. What have you done? What did this you is, do? This is, what kind of climate have you created? This is something noticed, is it? Huh? This is something that's being noticed, is it? Yes. Wow. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they're noticing that fewer and fewer men are finding it. So like, they're actually noticing. I mean, trouble. statistically, this is the case. Like in the last ten, two years, two years, last two years, the number of men willing to approach women, actually, the number of men willing to engage with women they don't know on any capacity. That mm-hmm. means, uh, hello, could you direct me to the bathroom? They don't want. They they'll they won't talk to a woman for that. Okay, they they won't t- engage with women at all. In any capacity, even professional and completely without any interest in anything sexual happening. The number of men has increased by 10%. Yeah. Apparently. So, I mean, I would imagine that the number of men who are actually willing to approach a woman for any kind of uh, a, a romantic interaction or a potential romantic interaction is even higher. So I'm not, su- I'm, I'm not surprised that they're finding this. It's just that... 
you would think that this wouldn't be necessarily hitting singles meetups just yet. Because, you know, you'd imagine that men would be still willing to go to them. Those men who are still looking, you know, willing to go to them to actually meet a woman. Hmm. All right. Well, I mean, they're not they're not going to these meets. Uh, It's it's mm -hmm. like, well, I've I've seen I have to find it, but I saw a couple of things about it. I think it was it might have been on Twitter, but it might have been somewhere else where women are like taking pictures with other women that they see at these things. And they're like, yeah, there's no guys here. <laughs> and it's like, uh, or maybe there are very few and maybe they don't like the selection. And so they're just not guys like, oh, there's none. And there's like a bunch of guys, but they're mid. So they're like, ah, those aren't guys. That's just background decoration. Um, okay. But anyway, the video was meant... Okay, I already read that part. This, uh, The clip was taken from the influencer's social media and reshared on X, where a user praised the man and called it perfect because he only looked at the woman instead of approaching her. And here's the original video. Uh, it's playing in the background, no sound, so you can see. Um, yeah, that was basically it, I guess. I mean, this is her TikTok. Um, let me mute. I don't this want is certainly this some significant... music or something. Social what? proof for her. <laughs> well, it, yeah, social proof, exactly. Jesus. What? No, it's just so freaking tight. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, again, I mean, they know what they're doing. This is the thing that why why I get annoyed with this because it's like we know these women know what they're doing, and it's okay. Yeah. Like it's okay, you know. Um. And so anyway, Maria goes on. Yes, that is somehow worth some praise. Perfect. He looked, he admired, he stole one more look and then simply went about his business. That's how you look at a beautiful person, the post read. That post was amassed over 27 million views and the comment section is filled with people gushing over the anonymous man for not approaching the woman and making a nuisance of himself. It is a cesspit of a man being congratulated for doing less than the bare minimum, revealing a petty, stark reality. Pretty stark reality. Okay, but... Where did the TikTok trend where we're all condemning men for doing exactly the same thing or even less in, uh, in, don't you remember all those videos where the, these women would wear an outfit like that with their, uh, how does that woman call it? Pussy fat. Pussy oh yeah. Fat. Yeah. Right. At the gym. You're talking about the gym, fat. the gym the thirst trap fat. videos where guy like yeah, they'll, the, they'll go there <laughs> intentionally to bait guys into looking. And then when they do, mm-hmm. they make videos and try to go viral and. And then you need you need Joey Swole to come out there and say, "Look, this is not this is not productive behavior at a gym." But these women don't yeah, care. And, That's what I'm saying. Like yeah, they but, break but, the but rules, I, they bend the rules, they they don't obey like the social mores. They do what they want, and then they dare you to call them out. That's what it is. That's yeah, why it bothers well, me. Well, but my point is that how like what what was like a couple months ago? We we're all about how men just looking is is horrible creep behavior. Like, yeah. don't you remember those, those TikTok? And I remember them because I was watching them and I'm like, what are these guys doing? I mean, some of them aren't even looking as long as he did. Not even taking a second glance. Uh, one of them looked like he was looking over and being like, lady, you're using the machine wrong. And then looked back because he, he had this look of incredible, like maybe this is, this is like you're saying, oh, I, I'd, I'd like to approach, but I would never get anywhere. I, I, when I looked at it, it seemed more like he he looked annoyed. I'm like, how well, is that? Well, it depends on the it depends on the context, but yeah, I think I think if I'm how being some... as uncharitable, I would say uncharitable, but like if they find her attractive, their reaction is most likely, "Wow," and, yeah. and that's basically it. But like, there is underneath the "Wow," there is this like, "Well, she's definitely taken." Right, like or or whatever, right? I'm 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 just gonna admire from afar and leave it at that. Or her the tailoring, holy shit! Like the other thing is this thing is that is some serious tailoring. Yeah, probably. The tailor should come out and take a bow there. They poured they poured her into a mold. Yeah, I know. I mean, wouldn't it be hilarious if he came up and said, "Excuse me, who's your tailor?" And then and then you know be like, "Oh, that was amazing." Okay, and then left. Yeah, <laughs> that's an amazing outfit that you made. But, I mean, like uh, you know, uh, this goes back to the date psych thing too. See, mm-hmm. I think it. And here, here he is. He's right there in the background. Yep. I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm mousing, but you can't see my pointer. It's okay. I think he's, he's right Hispanic, there so you're probably like, right. 
with interpreting his body language. The thing it probably was yeah, he's checking her out. It's I, fine. Like, yeah, you know, it's, like yeah, I, and, but my point is, my overall point is, okay, and then just get like how long ago were we complaining about men doing exactly this in gyms with fitness influencers with their their yoga pants where you could literally make out like the cleft of their genitals and they're shoving their asses and yeah the pussy (laughs) and and they're shoving their asses up yeah i'm like looking at this like i would be staring industry has is not making those things for comfort they are making for them incons- to enhance, inconspicuous. to lift and separate. <laughs> That's what they're yes, for. The li- <laughs> they got, no, they got, exactly. I'm serious. They got like physics engineers working on those things to maximize women's sexiness appeal. And they know that and they buy it for that purpose. It's not an exaggeration. Mm-hmm. Like this is a mm-hmm. whole industry. What? Yes. And that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like you cho- you are making a choice to put this clothing on. You are making a choice to deliver yeah, a do, message to people around you. Like this do you remember, is this is do you, speaking of these videos. Do you remember the video of the woman? There was a video you may, you may not have seen it. A woman from a, from the west, I don't know, I think maybe America, but I'm not sure. Could have been Canada, but she went to Japan and she went to a gym and she thought she had a cute outfit and the Japanese made her put on something more uh modest. Appropriate? Yeah, they were like this is not appropriate for the gym. And she got pissed and she made a video about it. And I was like, huh, what do you mean? You're just wearing a cute yeah, outfit. This is, Why are the this Japanese, is what, it's not just Japanese women. It was Japanese men. There were men and women that were like, this isn't appropriate. You can't wear that here. She had a chain yeah. and put on a big shirt over the top and do her workout. And she was upset <laughs> because she couldn't do the, she couldn't be a thirst trap. Yeah. And, th- and honestly, did, did putting the shirt on affect your freaking workout? If you're there to work out. No, but yeah, I, I actually yeah. But she's saw not. that. Like, see, she's there to be seen. I also, I yet another bar. <laughs> the, the women like this is why the Japanese consider us all barbarians. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and and the fact that she gets pissed that she has to accommodate their culture when she's a guest in their country. Mm-hmm. It's astounding. Like, okay, yeah. Uh, anyway, but um, this uh. My overall point is not long ago we were we were lambasting men just for this, right? Just for looking. I'm yep. fairly certain that was what in fact there there was one video that I saw and I actually did a commentary on Honey Badger Radio about it. Very brief commentary, where this woman was in yoga pants getting gas. And she's like looking over her shoulder. Nobody, oh, nobody, at a gas nobody station. is looking yeah. at her. Nobody is paying attention to her except one truck drives past. I wouldn't even say slowly because they're in a freaking gas station. They drove past at the usual rate of speed that people drive in gas speed, stations. Yeah. yeah, usual cruising speed. You don't go fast through a gas station. And then they made an immediate left turn. Or an immediate right turn. And I'm thinking, I'm going through this in my mind, and I'm like, there's no way they were looking at your ass, lady. You know why? Because you cannot make an immediate right turn while ogling some woman's ass. Mm-hmm. You can't do it. You, and that's into traffic. I guarantee whoever was driving that truck was paying attention to the traffic. Right? You're taking an immediate right turn into traffic? You think you're watching some woman's ass while you're doing that? No, mm-hmm. you're not. So there was no way this dude, if it was a dude, because we never got to see him, there's no way he was looking. And I could see the reflections in the actual window. There was no head there to be looking at her. So nobody was looking at her. All that happened is that in a, uh, in a gas station, somebody drove a truck through it slowly because they were in a gas station and about to turn right into traffic. Yeah. And then she made this whole, oh my God, I'm being ogled. And that was considered, then people were like, oh, 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 you poor dear. How dare, how dare men slow down in a gas station before they take an immediate right into traffic. Yep. And this, so it's like this, I don't see this as being any different than what was happening in all those other Tic Tacs. So what's, what's the difference here? Except that I think this woman comes from a culture that when which women are are not yet insane about being looked at when they wear some the equivalent of look at me sign all across their butt cheeks 
Well, you know, I was going to say, I mean? speaking of which, this woman here, the one with the TikTok, she's a Latina. <laughs> I think that's yes, obvious, that's what I'm saying. Guys. But I mean, I think in like like Latino cultures, though, it's it, women don't have the same. I don't know if it's shame or like a weird controlling thing where it comes to like men looking at them. Like they know what they're doing and they're okay with it. Mm -hmm. And you know what I mean? Like Steve Brule, he moved to, uh, I think it was Colombia. And he talked about how, you know, a lot more like, I don't know, warm everyone is and sort of not mm -hmm. necessarily like sexually open, but there was a lot less, um, you know, of this weird kind of like uh, feminist Puritan Puritanism that was circulating around men and women, like people were more comfortable with each other. So, um, I, I I wonder about that. You know, I okay. So I got a super. I got two super chows. So thanks, guys. Uh, Richard Pierre gives us five dollars and says she might not be a hoe, but she's wearing a hose uniform. That's a um, that's a Dave Chappelle joke. So mm. <laughs> just because I'm dressed Excellent. this way. Uh, and then Great Indoors gives us $5 and says, if a man who's a three falls in love with a woman and no camera is around to record it, does it still make an offense? <laughs> um, um, yes, I just, apparently. I, I'm just, I guess we're not, we're, we're off the whole kick of, of saying that if a man even takes a look to look annoyed at a woman that he's offend, uh, he's crossing a line. Crossing a line. I guess we're it's off that like kick. It's almost like this is all designed to keep men and women from actually interacting with each other. But, you know, let's yeah. blame men more. Let's blame men more. Let's make them step okay, let's up. Let's see what, what additional wisdoms Mary has to afford us. Oh, yeah. Let's keep going. That was my very fancy way of saying let's read further. Yeah, yeah. Here's Okay, so here's video shows a man and here's the man again. And she, and she was also showing, like, how... She compares with her mother. So the, the, her video starts, my mother, and it looks somewhat obviously a little older, but kind of the same figure, you know? So yeah, good on you, good genes. Anyway, it says uh, there are plenty of comments. What was that? Can we go back up? Like her mother? Yeah, it's in the beginning of the video. Like, let me go. Oh. Yeah, let me. Oh, shit. Uh, I go back. Just refresh. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll refresh it. It seems to it be. It starts uh, by. I think it starts here, showing the mother. It might be in the other TikTok video, but no. I, okay, it's not here. It's it's here. That that's it right there. My mom. Did you see it? Yes. Yeah, those um, are some good genes there. Yeah, they play it again. Get out of here. Leave me alone. That's my mom. So yeah, when I pause it, it doesn't. It, it doesn't show. But you see it. So her mother has. It might be an older video of her mother, but yeah, it's basically like similar mm -hmm. that's what she's like obviously saying you know my mom and i are are, are similar um uh, but it's all but it comes down to like we have the same figure so mm -hmm. all right anyway it says yes. um there are plenty of comments to sift through highlights include someone saying that the man should be given respect for not harassing the woman while another said it was a beautiful moment and an example of a man doing everything right and she puts that in quotes well, Mary's she doesn't jealous. think it's actually right I want to know what jealous. she's going to say, but what was that? She has a seething jealousy for this woman's ass. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> you know that meme of the guy coming out from behind the tree? Like, <laughs> it's like... Anyway, um, one wrote that this was the most respectful stare they'd ever seen. <laughs> Even the people commenting are like trying to like work like how do i talk about this without getting in trouble have you noticed that like you see how like anyway someone else said that when you genuinely admire someone you don't cross their boundaries and this was a prime example of that like i don't even like what these people are saying about this guy are you telling me if christian gray was standing there getting a good eyeful of that ass and just kept walking they would be like oh yeah that's exactly what he should have done yeah right <laughs> are you no <laughs> oh man okay all right one man wrote that he enjoyed the clip because it was good to see men aren't scared to be seen looking at women in public oh god wait 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 <laughs> that's actually kind of interesting so this man who said he said i'll read it again 
One man wrote that he enjoyed the clip because it was good to see, and she doesn't think that's good, so it was good to see that men aren't scared to be seen looking at women in public. So that means that the man who wrote that it genuinely thinks that it is scary for men to be seen looking at women in public mm. because it is because they've mm -hmm. made like they're, 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 there's like this, it's like, he's aware of like the danger of essentially being caught appearing to be a creep, which is completely subjective. And he's been pointing out that this guy doesn't seem to, he's at least either couldn't help himself or didn't care. And he's saying, wow, that guy's, courageous because it's, it's good that he wasn't scared right to see that men aren't scared so so that that means that what this guy did in the eyes of the man who made this comment is an act of courage because of just how absolutely mm -hmm. messed up things are mm -hmm. you see what i'm saying yeah um and and it's funny because this woman probably never felt threatened the, the woman who's who took her picture she clearly didn't mind like what she was wearing because she chose to wear it, but we're mm -hmm. supposed to worry about what she should be feeling because that's what Mary Madigan is saying. And that this guy had the audacity to look at her. There was a strong sentiment that looking at women was something that all guys do with one man saying he could relate to the guy staring because every man has, see has been in this position before Perhaps the most alarming response was a tweet that praised the man for not harassing the woman. He just looked at her with admiration without disturbing or harassing her, one praised. Well, I... Is the person making the mm -hmm. comment the piece of shit, though? Why would you assume that a man is ready to harass a woman like he deserves to be rewarded for not doing a thing that he probably wouldn't have done anyways? And also, what does he mean by harassment? Yeah, like, what the do you only mean by way harassment? that you can say it's harassment is because he's an uggo yeah or, or you allegedly. think he is like he the, the, the only reason he, like he looks okay, kind of like dj Khaled to me but you know let's say he would approach her was it would it really be harassment if he's if he's like uh hi i just want to know where your shoes where thinks. you get your shoes i don't know i was thinking get, getting a pair from my mother I, what, who knows like would that be harassment like it, it's completely up to her yeah, and, but, but, and, but and the only, only that, reason though, why anybody would look at that and say if this man approached her it would be harassment is because of his looks that's it that's the only thing that it would make this harassment in, in uh, to them so that's the only appraisal unless you're honestly saying that every time a man approaches a woman for anything is harassment like well, not only that, but like, not only is harassment subjective in the eyes of the person that's being approached, like in the case of, mm. of uh, this woman here, got her name already, the model, the, the TikToker, but the, the author of this article, uh, Mary, is saying that if Mary is offended, it, it's like Mary can decide it's, if it's yeah. harassment, right? Yeah. Even though it's somebody else. So she can do Did it by proxy. Did you ask Mary for consent? Did yeah. Barbara, did you ask Mary's consent before you poured yourself into those leggings? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Someone, as someone not, did you not get the consent from someone? Is there someone being left out? <laughs> uh, since this is, I, I see why this has been like the talk of the town, um, in a way, because it's just, it's so insane. So I got another mm -hmm. super chow. Thank you, Richard. Mm hmm. And he says, uh, for $5, all of those comments about the behavior of this man has derailed the point of this video being about the female influencer and robbed her of her position in the center of the spotlight. The well, the female influencer is not the one who's pushing all this crap. But yeah. you're right. Mary has, in, in this article, uh, I think actually Mary has sort of dehumanized Barbara, or, or because she's hasn't like you don't do that. You don't refer to the woman when you know her name. That's dehumanizing. Yeah. Like that's like she is taking away Barbara's individuality. She's not only taking away Barbara's appraisal of the situation, and really, it should be Barbara's ad attitude towards it that establishes, if anybody. Um, uh, or at least a, a reasonable standard 
Like, if, if Barbara isn't taking offense, there should be no reason for Mary to take offense, right? Um, and also, Barbara's offense should be held to a reasonable standard, too. But it's even worse that she's not taking any offense, and then some rando on the internet, New York Times reporter, you know, takes offense on her behalf. It's ridiculous. This is some offense inception going on here. Okay, let's yep. let's let's finish. How New much York longer Post, is this? How Times. much did this Mary milk this? I mean, I, I think that's the big offense here is just how mm -hmm. much Mary managed to make out of this. All right, like, a woman how said. How many more paragraphs are this? Is this? How many paragraphs? <laughs> it's it's almost over, I think. Oh, okay, good, good. Uh, so yeah, uh, um, a woman said the res that the response to this video proved that society standards had gone down the drain. Praising a man for looking at a woman's butt and not harassing her. When has society standards become this low, she demanded. Psychologist, oh, they brought in the experts to talk about this. <laughs> Let's bring in the psychologists. Oh, <laughs> psychologist Carly Dober said that celebrating this kind of behavior is a huge problem and enforces the kind of culture that has this wrong idea that women owe men something. What? Oh my God, where did you get... We really escalated fast there, folks. <laughs> yeah, right. Wait, hold on. I got something for that. Hold on a second. Um, <laughs> just, just, a, just a second. Hold on. Boy, that escalated quickly. <laughs> I mean, that really got out of hand fast. <laughs> All right. Um... <laughs> All right, so now we're at men are entitled. The guy just looked at her, walked off, and now we're talking about how people saying, "Hey, oh, well, he just looked respectfully and moved on," and that that means that women. Oh, okay. Let's let's see if she can explain the logic. Let's see what the All right, logic yeah, let's is. Find this is. This is quite the stretch. Let's see. Is it men owe men owe women owe Does men something because this landing. guy happened to be in a place where a woman was wearing. A very tight outfit and he happened to look at her like you're just like complete like just you know the, the 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 planets aligned i'm sure that he remembers because he's viral now <laughs> congratulations mm -hmm. dj khaled you played yourself um okay but anyway uh quote this is the psychologist while restraint or holding back might be might what while restraint or holding back might be being celebrated by some men, that attitude might reinforce the belief that women are solely there to be accessed for pleasure by men or to get attention from men and that they are being the bigger person in not going out of their way to hit on women. Oh, she for the said. love of God. So if a man doesn't do something that, he, okay, so feminists say, okay, don't do this, men. But if you don't do it, that doesn't mean you're better. That doesn't mean you're morally better. Like, so you can't, you can't consider yourself better than the man. Okay, so this man can't consider himself better than the man who was like, oh, wow, I'm going <laughs> <laughs> to. Just, just honk honk yeah, just went right in there right right into the crack honk honk <laughs> you got a great ass you got a great ass just just you know i just needed i, mean, I felt the, the, the i felt the so, urge to 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 palpate the produce to just see the quality just see the quality of those melons yeah, right yeah. yeah so but this guy who just looked and walked on can't consider himself to have a better response than a man that just went right for it and just was like, I'm going to get, I'm going to have a couple grabs and then walk on. And that's the feminist framework. Men, you have to do X, Y, Z. Men, you have to do a whole alphabet of things. You have a whole freaking list of shit that you have to do, but you shouldn't feel like you're a better man for having done it. Yeah, you, should still, <laughs> you should still feel like shit. Like that, that's, what yeah. kind of fucking lose lose? What, what kind of entitlement does this woman have? Like she demands that the slave class, you know, not look at Yon Princess. But if the slave class can manage to have that kind of obsequious attitude, they shouldn't feel better than the slaves that are un incapable of attaining the standard. Like that's literally what she's saying. Men, you have this standard, but don't feel good about attaining it. You know what I think would be the fucking 
cherry on top is if Barbara caught wind of this video, seeked that man out, and went on a date with him. <laughs> and then took <laughs> pictures. Like, oh, I want to take you out. You seem like a... I, I'm glad you noticed. I was out here marketing. You know, it's like they say, like, men, men are salesmen, women are marketers. Uh, she was marketing, and he and he was, like, interested in buying, and she decided to take him out. That would be golden. I mean, I don't know that it's likely. Probably isn't. But still... It would be funny because yeah. essentially Ma Ma Maria or Mary is essentially in in um, she is inserting herself into this exchange by commenting on mm -hmm. this. And yes. she doesn't know any of the parties involved. She doesn't know what Barbara wants. She doesn't know all, you know, Barbara's probably going to get a, a million more views out of this because people are going to be looking at it for one thing. And they're going to be like, oh, check out this girl's TikTok videos. Um and the man is probably going to be like, well, I guess I'm kind of famous, but, you know, but I'm also a piece of shit. It's a, I guess I got caught. Maybe I shouldn't look I just, at women anymore. I mean, I don't know. I just can't believe what this individual, this freaking psychologist, incidentally, this should be a, this should be a wake up call to anybody who, who thinks, well, if you want to go to a psychologist, just be really careful because you might get Carly Dauber. Um, while well, restraint as a man, or holding I mean, like, but psychology is all captured it's, by She's feminism, not good for mostly. a woman either. Yeah. While Go restraint or Mitchell. holding back by, might be celebrated by some men. That attitude might reinforce the belief that women are solely there to be accessed for pleasure by men. So men who say women are not there for your pleasure, so you must be respectful regardless of the fact that they've poured themselves into a sausage casting in which you can see the cleft, not just of their ass, but, you know, the pussy fat. Um, the pussy fat. <laughs> yeah, like you can see all of it. If you if you don't still be engage in a respectful manner towards these women who are putting all their goods on display, those men who are saying that to other men are also participating in treating women like objects of pleasure. So men who are saying to other men, women aren't your objects of pleasure, even if they put themselves on display, you can't treat them that way. They are also doing that. Yes. I, I, Somehow. <sighs> okay. All right. Uh, back to the this article. This society I... is insane. Yeah. <laughs> this, Literally, this, well, this... you should not listen to this. No, no. This is, this is, this is insanity. And honestly, I think that this is jealousy. Oh, they absolutely. are jealous of the attention could, that Barbara is getting. Could this be a getting. kind of female, uh, let's say, intersexual competition manifesting yes. as like journalism? This is this is female intersectional competition. What's really happening here is they are trying to make Barbara into a victim of attention that she appreciated, right? Attention that she apparently is getting and is at least honest to say, yes, this is the attention I'm getting. I want this attention. I'm happy with it as long as somebody isn't, you know, trying the goods out for a ride, shall we say? Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, but it's like, and then they're inserting themselves and they're trying to make her a victim of this to discredit the attention that she's getting out of jealousy for that attention. This is transparent. You know, yeah. and this is why we had all of those myths and fairy tales about the jealous queen with her, her mirror, you know, who's the fairest in the land and all of these cautionary tales about female jealousy, mm -hmm. you know, that there was there for a reason so that women would learn to challenge that, that that is a form of villainy. Am I blowing out the, um, my mic at all or, um, is it okay? Are the volumes it okay? okay? You're, you might be a little too close. Oh yeah. Like, All right. Should I move past? Let, let, uh, okay. Well, chat. What do you guys think? I mean, she sounds. Yeah. Fine what do you think? Me. Should I should I go close or should I stay? Should I maybe eat a, the mic? No, you're, or maybe you're, give it you some go, breathing No, room. you're fine. Stay there. Okay. okay. All right. I think this okay. might be the end here, but let me see. And then there's some comments. Oh, good luck. So okay, that is the end of the article. No, no, no. There's the still comments, two paragraphs. Let's just do Dauber. All the the um. The psychologist has two things left to say at the bottom there. Oh, so oh like, yeah, you're yeah, right. It's, it's a little more. confusing. Dober it's also complex. said, yeah, because there's like a, this looks like the yeah, end. It's, yeah. Dober also said the response to the clip highlights how much she still needs, how much still needs to change in modern society. Quote, 
Why do we listen to these people? Culturally, some men still also think that women wearing particular clothes or presenting themselves in certain ways still demands attention from the opposite sex. This is still something that needs to change, she said. Don't look at me. I'm wearing this in public. I know what it looks like. I know what I'm doing, but don't look at me. Don't look at me. Okay, okay. There are ways to get attention without getting sexual attention. Like this woman could have worn an elephant suit. Yeah. She could have been she, she could, could have, have been worn, a furry. That would have gotten attention. She could have worn the blood of her enemies and be carrying a freaking axe. Okay? Yep. There's ways to get attention that are not sexual. These the things that the reason why the things that she's doing get attention is because they're sexual displays. All right? Are you gonna okay? If a woman had walked past, you know, just imagine a buzz cut, you know, obvious bull dyke, walk past, done flannel a double shirt, take, comfortable shoes, yeah, flannel shirt, short arms. done a double take, would you say that that is, um, it's culturally some women still think that women wearing particular clothes are presenting themselves in certain ways, still, still a de- man's attention. Like if a woman was responding to the sexual display, would you deny that it's a sexual display? No. You just want to punish men for feeling an emotion. It's really, it's like crypto. However it's like the fleeting, worst part of crypto Christianity. Yeah. And it's like this condemnation of male sexuality. Like this is basically St. Augustine's shadow. Like right here in this entire freaking article. Yeah. You know, the, the demon rod. And, and how men's sexual desires are horrible. Like this is yeah. uh, okay. Let's keep going. Let's do the comments because this. Well, is, that's the yeah. That's the end of that. Let's people. get some comments. Bored housewife says, uh, "Oh come on, men have ogled women for centuries, and women love it, and men love it when they're ogled as well. She loves it too, but she's using social media to claim she she doesn't because that's going to gain her a lot of more yeah, followers and attention." Thing. This is totally unfair. Okay, what's going on? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. What was that? Okay, for some reason, my mute thing is... Yeah, it says you're muted, but I can hear you. Yeah, it says my mute, but okay, that's really scary. But anyway, all right. Now this individual whose sentiment, you know, I think is true, but of course, we're in, we're right now we're in like a society that's decided that it hates reproduction. So we're going to attack it in every angle possible. Now this bored housewife thinks the woman in question, the, the influencer, was upset. Yeah. I don't think she was. No, so she now wasn't. Mary, it, now somebody thinks that Mary's opinion is the influencer's opinion. Women oh, are a hive grief. mind, I guess. So she, yeah. or she, the Borg cube told her what was going on, and then she told, um, Ma- Mary told Barbara, and now Barbara has been affected as well because they're the Borg cube. Mm-hmm. And, the Borg cube. They're trying to assimilate her. Um, okay. Yeah, she's like she's uh, she seems to be misunderstanding. Maybe that's the point too, though. Maybe uh, Mary is acting. Uh oh, I think Allison dropped, and I dropped too. Uh oh, something going on with Discord. What's happening? Uh, sorry guys. Seems to be an issue with Discord here. Am I still? Am I still here? It says I am. And you guys, you guys can still hear me. Okay. I don't know what's going on with at, with Discord. Discord's doing something goofy. Um, can't stream into the server. Why are some of these closed, and some of these are open? Help me out here. What's happening? Hold on a second, guys. I'm sorry. Oh, I got kicked out of the live show. What okay, I'm, I'm back. Are you back? Yeah, I'm back. What what happened? I don't know. Some weird shit. Discord did, did you, something did... really weird. Hold on a second. I'm trying I'm to fix ask, this. A second. I'm going to ask the guys in game chat if something happened to them. Okay. Yeah, uh, I saw a, a couple of them got little... Some of the uh, other places that I can access, they they also have weird shit going on. But we're back. Oh, Allison left the room. She'll be back. Give me a second. I'm going to read um, 
All right, so they basically said that Discord shit itself for everyone. So that's what happened, guys. Sorry about that. Uh, All right, I just turn your camera back on. There's a, there's actually a game thing going on in our Discord right now as we do the stream. So I just tried to ask them what was going on, and they told me that it's everybody's got. I I was scared there for a moment because I was like, looking, your camera. I was looking at I was looking at our server, and there was nothing in it. Yeah, mine. Yeah, I saw that too. Yeah, the other there, it's actually a couple of places are affected. The Honey Badger oh. Radio fan Discord and the Anti Feminist Burrow, which is like another Discord group I'm in, they both have like notifications. So something's wrong. Discord is. I mean, it's really useful, but it's got problems. Okay. Anyway, yeah. um, I I I just I just want to point out DJ Khaled did nothing wrong. Um. Mm. So I was, was reading that the guy comments. DJ Khaled. No, the guy in the video looks like DJ Khaled, but it's it's, oh, it's okay. just some guy. Um, All right, so I'm just calling him a that. Few more. It's like parking lot Batman. Comment. We're just calling. Him <laughs> parking lot. I wonder if we'll ever see the return of parking lot. Put your hands <laughs> off. Get your hands off her. We're <laughs> hurting her. <laughs> Where are the other drugs going? Anyway. <laughs> Uh, board housewife says um yeah we already read that one let's go to i didn't read the whole little... thing though it just oh, okay. it just says there will come a day as she ages when men will stop admiring her and that is something to complain about i speak from experience and then girth brooks sounds like a porn name says you sound <laughs> awesome <laughs> girth brooks will rogers jr says i too like to enjoy checking out a piece of meat but i know it's too expensive and bad for my heart so i move on um and then they kind of they're kind of going after her but i don't think that's fair it's uh because it's not this isn't um this is not the uh what's her name rebecca rebecca no mm -hmm. what the hell barbara this is not barbara complaining barbara's not complaining unless she is i don't know i have to look um Purple Battery says, but most women like being admired. Just look at what women post on social media today. Everyone wants to be on stage. Yes. I mean, duh. Um, show more comments. It's her literal job to be looked at. She's an influencer selling herself for likes, creating and posting videos for attention. Her body was bought for maximum exposure. Low standards are people like this who set up scenarios at the expense of others so they can profit from it. Well, we did click on the article, so I guess I guess you win. You checkmate, Mary. I guess you got us. Well played. Uh Rock Koo says, What if this guy identifies as a woman and was staring and pacing because he wanted to ask her where she got her outfit? As he was interested in getting that outfit for some reason. Yeah. How transphobic of you. <laughs> Oh, now you're muted, Allison. Oh, good grief. He could okay. have been gay. He could have been like, I, I, I would like to get. Yeah, I, no, I think this would look good go on with one shoes? of my female relatives. I, I, maybe he's a drag queen. Who knows? Who knows? Absolutely. We don't know. You know, his, yeah. his name could be DJ Khalifa, not DJ Khaled. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so anyway, so these women who complain and say we need to respect pronouns automatically assume this guy had lurid things on his mind. Really, ladies, who's jumping to conclusions now? Uh, Joe Frazier says, excellent return of serve. <laughs> uh, that is good. That's, you know what? I don't know if you're going to top that one. Okay, I got another super child. Do you have any thank yous by any, by any Yeah, chance? I do. I have one thank you to give to uh, the Great Indoors for $100. Thank you, Great Indoors. Oh, thank you, so, Great Indoors. Wow. Very much appreciated. And again, if you would like to join our very generous supporters to make sure that we can continue to bring you this content, please go to feedthebadger.com slash support. And it's very much appreciated. Um, and uh, yeah, let's... Uh, all right. Uh, oh, so, and also, if you want to send us a message, feedthebadger.com slash just the tip. Yeah. We get the full benefit of the funds, and you get the full benefit of avoiding YouTube censorship. So win win. Yep. Except for YouTube. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, YouTube deserves not to win everything. Okay. Judah Dyad. What was that? Oh, did you want to do the uh, super chow? Yes. I'm going to do the super chow. 
Richard yeah. Bierre gives us five dollars. Thank you, Richard, and says the majority of men were completely uninterested in looking either by being homosexual or eunuchs. These women would be complaining about that and creating a propaganda campaign against it, such as the public service mini movies from the 1950s against homosexuality as being predatory. My Discord has been having random crashes and restarts too. Yeah, oh. it's a pretty okay. Unstable. Well, I'm glad it's not. I'm glad it, it wasn't like, it's, like... It, it, it's constantly updating and it doesn't seem to be fixing anything. Mm. I don't get it. Yeah, maybe maybe, maybe, just, um, maybe it's some stage either, of entropy. Yeah, it's a general entropy of the of the platform. I mm. mean, I, I'm thankful because it's free. So, you know, I'm not going to complain. Actually, we're paying for some aspects of the uh, like uh, to upgrade oh. our server. So it's not completely. Well, free. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. OK. Uh, okay, Judah Diah Johnson says she's showing it off. However, you aren't allowed to look if you don't meet her super high standards. Social life she is so no out of whack problem. anymore. It's ridiculous. Gone are the days when people actually socialize and did things in person. Okay, this uh, is the problem. Again, she's not she's, the one complaining. She's not the one complaining. I think someone yeah. explains that down here. Mary, Mary Madigan is an unattractive blue-haired troll. This article is clickbait. She's a joke. She's a joke. She's never had the pleasure of a man admiring her, so she projects her outrage onto other women who have. Um, an honest Democrat. An honest Democrat. Weird. So, maybe, maybe so, there are so, you know there are people on the left who are getting freaking tired of this. You know. Yeah, maybe. No, I've seen it. They are getting tired of it. Sorry, I, I, I have right. to figure out how to get the right distance from my mic. Oh, it's I probably, think that sounds fine. I probably should. People said it sounds fine in the comments. Okay, so, so it sounds fine. All right, so I'll, yeah, I'll yeah. try to keep it like this. I am trying to make the sound better because I know that that was an issue. Yeah. Yeah. Right, the, the thing, I think people are confused. They didn't like really look at this closely. I think that Mary Madigan wanted people to mm -hmm. think that Barbara is offended, mm -hmm. on and Mary Madigan is just speaking up for the. For the voiceless, giving voice to the voiceless. But the truth is, Barbara's, Barbara's probably fine with it. Like He's probably flattered. Because he is, probably. Let's be honest, I mean, she's well, Latina. Her, her, whole, her, her whole job is to be looked at. Like, yeah, what, but what also you, she's from a culture about? where that's, people are a little less... They, <clears throat> they, you know, l l Latinos, you know, but Latin culture, they still want to have sex, you know, and have families and stuff. They they don't they don't hate that th those things we like do we like do to reproduce. like the white people, yeah yeah I I I you know you get that added you get that sense it's yeah. nice <laughs> though you know it's like yes. you you go to the the north and we're all a bunch of frozen robots terrified yeah. of our of any kind of human urge you go down south and they're like yeah <laughs> that's I right. What is that that phrase? <laughs> but anyways, you know they, I mean, they seem to be more for comfortable Spain, with which themselves. Is like fucking under attack, but yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Italy's doing better though. They are, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's so the this end. Is... I mean, do you want to? It's seven twenty-one. Do you want to call it here, or, or do you want to look at something else? Um. Hmm. I mean. Honestly, I I found this amusing. There was some other stuff that we want. We're gonna thinking of of doing. We could uh, take a look at it quickly if you want. Well, I was thinking. I was thinking because it's kind okay, of related what were you and thinking? interesting. I was thinking we could look at that trailer for that movie. Oh, all right. You know, just do, do want to look at that trailer? Different. Okay, because I thought sure, this was interesting. Sure, let's look at the trailer. So there there yeah, have been a lot of movies coming out careful. lately that are. What was that? Just be careful because. I know. I know. I know. Copyright um, strike. There have been Copyright. a lot of 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 films coming out that are kind of like you know about the Me Too movement and the or they're like uh, allegorical references to you know men. Like there was that movie Men. There was um, th there's lots of stuff like that out there, right? And let me see if I can find this trailer. Um. And then I saw this trailer for this movie called Miller's Girl. And I'm going to show you. Did you see this yet, Allison? Have you seen this yet? You saw yes, the trailer? Yes, I've seen it. I've, saw, I've seen the trailer. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're going to look at it. Why don't we just it. do like the last, last few. Okay, it's not showing up for me, but. 
Oh, I'm putting it here. I'm putting it here. Oh, okay, good. Maybe we could go and just look at like the last minute of it instead of the first minute. The last just minute, just so it doesn't build up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah okay. like, so like right here. Sure. Okay. So I mean, I'll, I'll give you a quick. Every... What was that? Give him a quick. We're gonna have to stop periodically, guys. So don't get too upset about. Yeah, that. maybe like twenty seconds, something like that, or even fifteen, something like that. Yeah. So. Okay. This is this is a movie by Lionsgate. It stars Martin Freeman, who you guys might know from the Hobbit trilogy and the Sherlock show. Remember the Sherlock show that was on BBC mm. with Benedict Cumberbun and Martin mm. Freeman? Um, and no, but I believe you. You've never seen the Sherlock show? It seems like something that would be mm. up your ally a- alley. Up ally, your alley. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's kind like of like a, you know, it's Sherlock, right? But it's like modern and it's like super you know, brainy shit. I thought you would like it. Sort of a lot of people who like Dr. Who like the Sherlock show when it was on. And uh, it was the thing that I'm put, not liking that put Dr. Benedict who Cumberbatch and Martin Freeman on the map. Okay. I will take, I will check it out. All right. Yeah, yeah. You've successfully it's, sold. You know, if you it. like mysteries, which I think you do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Sherlock I Holmes, do. So, okay. Um, okay. But anyway, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Bander, Bandersnatch, uh, <laughs> Uh, anyway, so it stars Martin Freeman and Jenna Ortega. And uh, Jenna Ortega, I, I think of her as the kind of the she's like the anti Rachel Ziegler um, because she seems like a pretty decent woman and uh, young lady. I'll say young lady because I think she's I don't know, like she's in her 20s or something. And anyway, so <clears throat> uh, the the short version is this. OK, so you have this woman, she this young lady, she's 18. She's in college and she's like in an English class. And her English professor, who is played by Martin Freeman, is helping her on, a, on an assignment. And the young lady decides that she's going to seduce him. And so she starts like, you know, through the course of the film, she she starts to seduce him. And you basically things start to get like intense and I'm going to play, I'm not going to say anything until the end because there's what you, it's, it's sort of like a throwback to something, to some other stuff from the past, but this is something you don't see these days. Cause most of the time uh, movies like this are like, you know, uh, uh, he said, I think that was a, or she said there was a movie called she said, which was about the me too movement. There was the one um, about um, the, the black widow movie was basically like Harvey Weinstein and like, his Russian slave girls. So like stuff like that, but this is, this is different. So let's play it. Let's play it. Hmm. Why did you write this? This is inappropriate. Write what you know is what you say. If you don't rewrite this, I'll have to fail you. I dare you. I'm just pausing for the banana. So, okay. So she wrote some suggestive stuff for her assignment. He read it and he said, look, this is not appropriate. Okay. And it's likely it, I would imagine that the content of the suggestive stuff is is something to do with him. Yes. Um, Yes. Well, because earlier in the trailer, she's like with her roommate and, and, uh, she, the roommate is like, you, you, you should try to make him love you or something like that. Essentially, mm -hmm. uh, saying, you know, seduce him. Mm -hmm. See if you can get him, Exactly. you know? So, all right, let's play some more of this. It's like he's been living in grayscale and you're the first thing he's ever seen in color. You are the adult. Show some respect. We got to stop it. Sorry, we just have to do the, the, we just have to stop periodically again for the copyright and speak something. I understand. It's okay. So, this is. What? So success, she may have or may not have successfully seduced him at this point. We don't, we don't know. know. They don't show you much, but they can. T- he's. I think the guy is experiencing. Uh, like he's clearly being tempted, and he doesn't know what to do. But he does. Like he does have a wife and shit. No, no, this mm-hmm. is not as bad as you think. I, I, I don't think it's going to be as bad as you think. Is somebody saying in the chat that it's going to be bad? No, somebody said I already don't want to watch it, but I, I think, I think I showed it to Lindsay, and she was like, I "Actually, kind of want to see it." But let let's mm. play the rest of it or a little bit more. I mean, responsibility. Yep. You must do good, good That's all. He turns all right, her down. So at that point, 
Yeah, at that point, it's like, I think the indication is that he isn't going to do anything with her. He might be tempted, right. but he's he's establishing that boundary. Yes, he says, I am, you are my student, I am your teacher, that's all. Okay? Yeah. And of course, she doesn't like that. So, here we go. If she can convince them that something happened between us, I could lose my job. It's not all you could lose. So, okay. you see... Yeah, that's his wife, presumably. Yeah, that's like his wife or lover or something. We don't know. But he says to her, if she can convince them, them being the authorities or whatever, um, I could lose my job. And the wife is like, that's not all you'll lose. And it sounds like she's presuming his guilt as well. So Mm -hmm. it's like there's, you know, um, we'll we'll let we'll keep going. Somebody said, don't stand mm-hmm. so close to me like that song. By the yeah, police. that song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> okay. There's a little bit. There's only 20 seconds left. You can ruin his life. Okay. In so, your own words, how did it start? You're going to have to stop there. Yeah, so yeah. the implication is that that this is um that because she hasn't gotten what she wanted she's now going to make an allegation against yes. him again and they i guess the big question will be is the allegation true well uh, in the movie it, so at the end they put a disclaimer i'm going to show mm-hmm. i'm not going to play anything but i'm going to put it on the screen and it just says there are complex themes that appear in this film to access resources on some of the subject matter please visit lines8.com forward slash movies forward slash miller's girl so now this is the thing that I think is kind of interesting about this. Cause if you go there, I think it's like, you know, like sexual assault hotlines and things like that. What I think they might be doing is covering their ass because there've been other films about me too, that have simply just painted the women as victims and the men as perpetrators. There've been a number of those in the last like decade. And this one seems to feel the need to make a special disclaimer. So what I think is going on is that they're doing the other side of the coin. And there are other movies yeah. that have done this. So there was there was a film called The Crush, which is what I meant by a throwback. Alicia Silverstone was in it. And she was a young girl that was trying to seduce a man. And when he wouldn't um, like return her affections, she became obsessed and like, you know, dysfunctional, violent. I don't know. It's been a while since I've seen it, but I remember watching it. There was also... Um, there was this one single white female. Do you remember that movie? Mm-hmm. Single white female with, um, oh, I, I can't remember her name, but she's a really good actress. I, I like her in everything. But um, uh, she was like a roommate and she becomes obsessed with her roommates. Well, basically her roommate herself. She tries to like become her. But part of that is that she rapes her husband or her boyfriend. Um, mm. uh, election where Reese Witherspoon. I've never seen that. That that is that is that does that have that plot or cruel intentions? Do you remember that movie? Mm-hmm. Ryan Philippe and um uh, Sarah Michelle Geller, the like Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So there there are uh, oh and there was that that's it was a Swedish movie with Mads Mikkelsen where he is a um he he works at a daycare center and there's a little girl that that goes to the daycare center like a very young girl. And she accuses him of touching her because she's angry with him about something. And it turns to this big thing. The whole town is after him. And even after he clears his name and everything, everyone is suspicious of him forever. It's very, it's very good. I guess I well, wow, that is good. Um, do you guys remember the name of that one? Zering says the crush didn't see it, but it makes me think of Billy Idol's cradle of love video. Well, I'm um, looking on uh, men's rights Reddit right now of the discussion of this. Oh, they talking about this Show. movie? Yeah, I can I can send you the link right here. So um, you can yeah, sure. Send me consider the link. Consider putting it up. Um, so they have a discussion of this show. So apparently they've investigated it a bit more. And apparently it's a it may be about uh, something that ha- actually happened in real life. No, I don't see any oh. links to the to the um to that the alleged really in real life. Ep- yeah, I don't see any links to that, but um apparently a uh, new new movie called miller's girl that's about false accusations mm-hmm. i mean so I... this is if you go down a bit there's fantra death he says 
you know, this exact situation has actually happened in real life. The guy killed himself after the wife took the kids and left him. That made her have some doubts. So although the police refused to investigate further, the wife hired a private investigator. The whole incident revolved around an anonymously posted fictional account in the school newspaper. The PI proved that not only was it a lie, but the girl who did it was motivated by jealousy because the guy was her musical instructor and had developed a friendship with a different student, also female, but nothing inappropriate had ever happened between them. The teacher was giving her additional tutoring sessions because she was graduating soon and wanted to land a job in a particular symphony orchestra. The girl that made the allegations was jealous of that, so she published the story anonymously in the school paper when she knew that the teacher was unaccounted for. Turns out he was once again giving the other girl lessons at the time, and even after he was accused, she was afraid to come forward because the other girl threatened to make it look like the teacher was having an affair with her which likely would have prevented her from getting that job she wanted. So she remained silent. The teacher killed himself. The police figured he must have been guilty. And because it was an anonymous story run in a school newspaper, no criminal laws had been broken. So they didn't look any further into it. Eventually, it all came out that the teacher had been innocent. The one girl had lied. The other girl was the teacher's alibi due to the work of the PI. But again, no laws were broken. So there was no way to punish anyone for what happened. That's what Believe All Women gets you. Mm -hmm. Believe All Anonymous Accounts. Actually, not even believe all women. It just believe all accusations against men. Yeah, basically. Uh, so I mean, the movie, like, really. the, the Mads Mikkelsen movie I was thinking of, it's called The Hunt, came out in 2012. Um, there, there, and there are, so like I said, oh, Gone Girl is another one that has a false allegation in it, too. Um, so there are movies like that that exist, and I do think that's what this is. And plus, I, I don't know much about Jenna Ortega, but I do know that she seems like less programmed than other starlets in Hollywood right now. She seems to be a bit more uh, mm. independent willed. So she probably would do something like this and not see it as like a, um, uh, because like she would, she did the Wednesday Adams show that was on Netflix. I never watched it, but mm. apparently like, well, apparently, she, yeah. Oh yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I, I didn't actually watch it either, so go ahead and say what you were going to say. Oh, I was just going to say that, I, you know, she did the Wednesday Adam show, and I guess that the, the people at Netflix wanted her to do some things that she felt was really out of character, and she fought with them about it. Kind of like how Henry Cavill got into lots of arguments with um, the team for the Witcher show, because Henry Cavill had read the books, and he was a big fan of the Witcher books, and he was like, that's not what Geralt would do. That doesn't make sense. And he was con he was basically creating a bunch of shit because he's a nerd and likes things to be like canon and accurate. And Jenna Ortega was doing something similar with Wednesday. Uh, John Doe says Wednesday was cringe. Probably. I never saw it. So I don't know. But. um, mm. uh, okay, yeah. Well, so, I guess we'll have to keep an eye on this and see if it actually is at all rebellious we will see the, uh, yes the institutional i don't normally uh -huh. I... get like at all interested in new films especially when they're yeah they, about this you know, subject matter because it's kind of predictable what it's going to be even but when this... they don't even when they don't have this kind of like political subject matter there's something really empty in new films like i was watching this christmas film with eddie murphy and I usually enjoy Eddie Murphy. Oh, is movies. it that new one? Yeah, and I'm like watching this. Oh, that looks this bad. Looks so that totally looks bad. empty. Like yeah. it's not even just like badly written because there's lots of badly written movies in the past. This is like, was this written by something that was human? You know, I think a lot of this shit is <laughs> written by AI. Actually, probably it. It doesn't have the Candy feeling. Cane Lane is what it was, right? Yeah, and one? it just it's a mess. But yeah. also it's like it just does it just misses all of its emotional beats to the point where I'm like, did the person who Eddie writes Murphy this is understand? an empty soul, uh, an empty shell. <laughs> he can't now? He is, yeah, now, yeah. It's because like if you watch old Eddie Murphy movies, even though you know he is a black actor, that none of that shit could be made today. He like none uh, of it. None of his comedy would work. None of it. So He's stuck doing that crap. I mean, he did a sequel to Coming to America. It was terrible. It was terrible. Oh, I remember the original Coming to America. Oh my yeah, god, it was, was great. great. <laughs> I love I loved the original Coming yeah, to America. It's like, probably okay, I'll watch. it's probably one of Eddie Murphy's best. I don't know, like it's that or or like 48 hours or like uh the Beverly Hills Cop. Like those are all fantastic. Like yeah. but 
Yeah, the sequel. So I was, was going to give this a try because it's Eddie Murphy, right? Huh? And well, I was going to give the movie a try because it's Eddie Murphy, but I'm like two thirds of the. Okay, first of all, the movie doesn't know what it wants to be. Mm-hmm. There's just too much going on. Like it's afraid. Here's one of the things about current cinema that I've noticed is very different, especially the further back you go. The further back you go, movies were really confident. Like they didn't. They weren't constantly, you know, jumping. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. They were confident of maintaining your attention. So there was this quality of, okay, um, I'm not going to worry about whether or not you've got, I've got your attention. I'm going to tell my story. And it, that confidence was compelling. You know, like Alfred Hitchcock's work and other stuff that we've been watching in the past had a confidence to it to its storytelling. And right now there's this insecurity with movies where it feels like the people writing them are constantly throwing shit onto the screen to keep your attention out of the fear that you are going to wander away. And the problem with that is I think it creates the very situation. Like it's a negative spiral. It's creating the very situation that you're trying to avoid. So I'm watching this movie and so much is happening and I'm not getting engaged in it because it isn't properly set up. The emotional stakes aren't there. It's just new novel crap to look at. And I'm like, uh, I, I, we ju- I just basically stopped um, watching about half an hour in. Be- we picked it up at the end and it's like, I, I, we, we scanned through the, the part that we missed and I'm like, well, there's nothing in there. Like it doesn't like the, the, the pacing, the amount of stuff, things are not established. I'm like, this is just chaos. Yep. And it hasn't, it, there's nothing really political in it it's, except it's for maybe the like, forced diversity. It, yeah. It's just, I, I guess it's just like ADHD material. Like if they're just yeah. throwing shit at you and there's no, you know, you were talking about how older movies were more confident. I think that when you had, and I'm not blaming special effects because I think special effects can be very useful to enhance things, but they're not a crush. They're supposed to enhance something that's already good, like that has a good uh, foundation. But I, I'm reminded of movies that had like, you know, very small budgets, a small number of cast members, a really solid script and really good performances. And that was it. Like some of the best, if you watch an old black and white movie, you know, like some old, like, Humphrey Bogart or um, what's his name? Uh, you know, I could have been a contender, you know, like it, th- those are good. Like people like, you know, you think it's like, oh, you know, this we're just supposed to like it because it's old. No, no, no. They're well made. Like they're well performed. Mm-hmm. They're very quotable. Like they're good. Yes. You know, I, and I was just talking about, too. I mean, it's not as old, but I was just talking about my favorite Christmas movie, Die Hard. And, um, <laughs> you know, it, it's solid. Like, it's just a good movie. It doesn't, it's, it's not a big budget. It's, it's, you know, it, yeah, it, it is what I mean, it there is. There was heart, just, you know, there was heart and there was confidence in the storytelling. Yeah, it was, it and was confidence, part of the confidence in the story. Part of the confidence, I think, honestly, is they felt like they were creating stories for an audience of people who liked people. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. So you present something that people are going to be interested in the characters that you're presenting, yeah. right? Yeah. That they're going to they're going to wait to discover the mysteries of these people that you're presenting. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And there, uh, there's I think a distaste to people in and I, it, the people that you're presenting don't have to be great people. Like I mean, like look at um, Vertigo. I mean, a lot of the people there, not great people, you know, but they were still interesting because there was that human connection. Oh, you mean like like likable characters? Like the characters were not Not, nice characters? Yeah, yeah. They weren't nice characters, but there was still some element of a human connection. Yeah, you felt like they were real people. Like They were real people, and that was interesting because of that. Yeah. And now that's like, you can't let... It's it's like we... Hollywood cannot let people be real anymore. Mm-hmm. They, they aren't people they are messages you know they're yes they're, 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 they're vessels for the message that's it and and they're empty and I, and that's the thing about eddie murphy that's so sad because i'm sure he's still got like good stuff in him he just needs to work with mm-hmm. the right people he should call up ben stiller I, I think ben stiller still has some good he he directs good movies he could probably still do a couple more good comedies 
because like if Eddie Murphy works with like, you know, Netflix or Disney, he's just going to pump out crap. Like you, you got to go with like talented people and there aren't a lot of them mm. left. There aren't. No, well, not so, talented storytellers. And part of the problem at least is not the ones that get jobs. I mean, there, there isn't, um, like the funny thing is, and I'm sorry that I'm moving around a lot like this and probably it's affecting the sound, but tell me if it is. Um, because I'm moving to look at, I got multiple screens here with stuff that I'm investigating right, as we talk. Too. Yeah, and I know that that might be really bad for my mic. So just tell me, correct me if there's a big problem here. But uh, and I know that the the sound spurgs will be jumping all over that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but anyway, um, like there's a there, as much as these individuals think that they're writing character or that they're good at character or they're good at like slice of life or whatever or just looking and examining character they aren't they're actually terrible at it because the the distaste for other human beings and the way other people process things and the inability to extend themselves to understand people who think differently than themselves it comes through so they don't like people they don't like the mental processes of other people they're suspicious of them they are tribalistic and xenophobic when it comes to the mental processes of anybody who doesn't resemble them mentally or at least yeah. resemble the the virtue signaling that they're presenting and they're they're xenophobic about that and there's no other word for it they're literally xenophobic for men or for people well, men yes but for people whose mental processes don't resemble their own and mm-hmm. their own is very much defined by virtue signaling gang colors and very simplistic understandings of morality so they don't like people and it comes through. They don't like yeah. people at all and it comes through. And it's really difficult to watch something that is an expression of misanthropy. misanthropy. It is misanthropy, and yeah, it is. Cynicism and also like this this kind of cynical meta stuff. Um, like you know, like the characters know that they're in a story. Um, that's that can get really it's just it's grating. It's great. You, know, you, you know, there's a way to do it well. I, I was yes, watching. Yes, there is. Oh, definitely. Um, yeah. uh, okay. Uh, oh, I'm blanking on the name. Blanking. Okay, I'm gonna. Uh, I got just gotta uh, get that name out. Are you talking about um, a comedy? Wayne's World. Wayne's World. Yes. 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 That was a good meta. That's a good yeah. meta. Her, uh, Pee Wee Herman. We need the Scooby Doo ending. Like. Yeah. <laughs> but that but like they don't do but that meta has at its core like Mm -hmm. an enjoyment of of psychology like that's the the big writer the really great writers it's a celebration of what of 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 what it is not of itself human but but not just not just the good parts also the bad parts but being able to take a character that's unlikable on the surface and start to Un, like peel they that away really well. and you show the bit in there what's when human. They, when they meet Alice Cooper. Oh, oh, we're still talking about Wayne's World. I was I'm talking going about for Wayne's gra- World. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what were you talking about? Oh, I was just talking. They about, do it. They do oh, it in character. Austin Powers. Does it a little bit too when they talk about yes, time and travel? But there's and, a warmth and Basil's there. Basil's like, uh, Austin is saying, "Well, what if I go back in time and I meet myself and blah, blah, blah. and he's like." Just forget about all that. <laughs> they just say, just the day, enjoy yourself. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like at the end of we're the not day, gonna, Austin, we're not going to waste time on the on making sense of the time shit. Just have fun. And yeah, he's like, yeah. You too, as well. You know, that's great. <laughs> um, but it's like they're these are really likable characters, and you can tell the writers yeah. like them too. And yeah, for what sure. I'm trying to get at is that there's no real human truth, and there's no sense of confidence in what they're saying. Um. And there's no real exploration of character because they're incredibly limited in their ability to model other minds. Like the instant you model another mind, their entire moral landscape collapses because they have to understand why people come to the conclusions that they do. And they have to actually extend themselves to sympathize with that. That's what a writer does. Yeah. A writer's skill, main skill, is their ability to recurs which is to tell a story and then tell a story from this point of view and that point of view, and then tell the story within a story, you know? So you see what I'm getting at? Like there's, there's so many characters and the better the writer is, 
the more of the story that they can reveal through through different perspectives, which means they can model those different perspectives in their mind. They can't do that because the instant they model those different perspectives in their mind, they become morally outcast. Do you see what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. they aren't allowed to understand other people's thought processes. That's why they're terrible writers. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes you can find one that's just really good at that, but crazy for whatever reason, their particular yeah. brand of artistic insanity is intersectionality. That's rare. <laughs> this is what I've noticed. This is why, you know, commies can do some really good art. It's because they have put all their garbage into communism and then they put, they push it away and then do the art. Okay. Th that can happen. Um, but for the most part, if you're not an absolute genius and you're not using your weird hang up, you know, intersectionality as your weird hang up, uh, like you're, it's almost like artists sometimes need some crazy shit that they believe as like a, as a, as a, as a foundation, something they can hold on to while they go absolutely insane with their creativity. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's like, but, but it's just like the, the thing that they hold on to is madness and you should not base any kind of political system around it. Okay. You really shouldn't agree with the politics of creatives for the most part, <laughs> except mine. You can agree with mine. <laughs> um, but anyway, what, what I'm trying to get at is just a lot of them, they, they, as soon as they're able to understand how other people think, how other people come to the conclusions that they do, they are apostate within their system. You, you get what I'm saying, right? Yeah. Because they can't. They cannot agree. They can't. How would they be able to write a Trump supporter? How would they be able to well, write somebody? Straw man. I mean, that's what they do. They, they yeah, literally exactly. like, they, they... they, they create a, well, okay. I guess they have an idea in their head of what that person is like, but it's, they have, they dehumanize them. It wouldn't be not just a Trump supporter, just like a, an MRA, a We've regular seen person. That. like a men's yeah. activist or a Trump supporter or a, or anyone or person, who disagreed or, or a person with in them. the South. I mean, you see like, uh, I, I live here in Virginia and I see people and I'm like, you know, rednecks in real life are nothing like rednecks in the movies, like nothing like them. It's, it's so, it, it's obvious that these people who write this, they like live in like coastal cities. They don't really like get out very much and they operate under a bunch of presumptions or whatever Jon Stewart or Bill Maher told them about Southern people. And that's what they put. And that's why when you see it, it's like, I know what you're going for, but that's not what people are like. Only people who grew up there will be able to do it properly and, you know, or, or, or are willing to be, to learn about it, I guess, you know, um, I, I think that it's, um, but that's the point. Like they can't, it's an understand. unwillingness to learn about people, not like yourself. Yes. Yeah. This unwillingness, it's a xenophobia. It's an unwillingness to learn or understand people who think differently than you. Yeah. And because of that, they don't understand character. And in fact, they don't really understand why they think the way they do. So they can't even express their own process very well. So you have these like, m like these very constipated stories. And it, then it all becomes about how much CGI can we get on the screen? How much weird novelty can we, how much, you know, like meta references, how many, uh, how many, obscure ways can we uh create like i don't know the D disney cinematic universe make these kind of like connections that nobody asked for and nobody cares about you know it becomes about that instead of the way that they structured older film which was we're going to talk about these characters and that's going to be interesting to you because you are interested in people who think differently than you and how they process the world and what choices they make you mm -hmm. know, and they can't do that because they just, they fail. Like a lot of Hollywood writers right now f absolutely fail on the level of being able to construct character. A lot of writers, period, now, like what they're pushing out, fail on the level absolutely. of being able to construct character. And We're it's, and, and like I said, I think it goes We're down to that, worthy. that sort of deep misogyny, or not misogyny, deep misanthropy. misanthropy misogyny is, and yeah. mis, mis, misandry. It's like that mis no, it's that, that misanthropy. Yeah. Yeah. And that willful denial that anybody could have any kind 
of humanity and, and that you have to humble yourself before the humanity of other people and how they process the world. No, you can sit in your self-righteous little cubicle judging everyone who isn't you and considering them contemptible. Well, that's not a position to be a good writer from. I mean, no, actually it is, but it isn't, you know, because there's a lot yeah. of writers throughout history who sort of did that. And yet they could still, their genius somehow overcame their xenophobia. I don't know. Yeah, you know what? Take what take what you will from what I have said. Yeah, make of that what I you have will. said it. That was a thing that was said. I, I don't. I don't want to like get this through because I'll start. I'll talk about movies like all day, and and so. character and stories. Yeah, I know. I just know I like just like movies forever. I like because I I don't get to watch them. I haven't watched them in a while. But you um, should join us on the the Patreon Discord discord when we're watching all of this stuff we've been uh yeah it's just revisiting. the timing is doesn't work for me most oh yeah because it's quite late because i have it's to do pretty other rough things for me and too. yeah like i'm i'm just too busy at that mo in but those if, moments. if you're listening and you'd like to uh enjoy watching movies with older movies with us uh and other movies today that seem a bit better than the dross that's coming out <laughs> <laughs> then you know you could come uh join us in our discord bad badgernation.online all right so is there any anything no further that we need let me do? look i don't think there's any more super chows or anything like that um well actually there is there is one but for some reason i didn't see it pop up but i'll i'll read it out anyways so richard bier gives us five dollars and says are you disappointed that the real life rednecks aren't meeting your preconceived expectations, Brian? I'm not disappointed. I mean, I didn't really expect it to like live up to what people assumed. And it wasn't just like what I saw in media. Like literally when I was telling people that I knew that I was like moving to Virginia, I remember one guy, he was like, you're going to Virginia? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, oh man, that's a hotbed of white supremacy. Then I get here and like, there's, there's about as many self-loathing white people here as there are in Chicago. <laughs> so it's like no that's not happening like actually actually here and i'm in southwestern virginia which is uh not richmond but it's you know it's still virginia it's very close to west virginia and uh there's a lot of mixed babies here like it's pretty normal i'm like yeah this and i knew that i knew that that person was like watching too much tv you know, getting all this propaganda, then you go there and it's like, yeah, they're basically just, you know, simple folk, basically, you know, it's, it really yeah. is. It's, they're just, they're just like, they're just like me. It's crazy. Mm. So, uh, I mean, yes. there aren't a lot of Puerto Ricans here, but there are some. Mm. Okay. But, uh, yeah. So shall we, shall we, yeah, uh... we can wrap it up. We can wrap it up. Okay. So, once again, I'll just remind everyone we are doing our monthly fundraiser at feedthebadger.com slash support. If you, you know, put it in early, if you're, if you're going to help out, again, very much appreciated. But it's always nice at this time to get it in a bit early so we don't have to, you know, bite our nails through the holiday season. You don't have any more thank yous, uh, right? No, I don't. I'm sorry. I don't have any more thank yous. Okay. But uh, thank you again to the great indoors who put in $100. Thank you. Uh, we have a ways to go, but it's uh, great to have gotten that much further to it. Um, so once again, feedthebadger.com slash support to make sure that we can continue to create this content. I think it's pretty unique and deserves to continue. Um, is that, you know, I think we approach this in very different ways. Uh, I know that our production isn't quite as polished as everyone else's, but I think that we've put a premium on trying to understand things rather than presenting an already prepackaged set of thoughts. Uh, which is why we don't necessarily agree with each other. I think me and Brian agree with a lot, a lot of what we both have to say, but me and Karen, not so much. Me and Hannah. <laughs> it could be fun to disagree with Hannah because it feels like you're slowly being consumed by a sleep stream uh, <laughs> steamroller. Steam roller. Yeah, it's like, you know that uh, um, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, that scene where yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. evil guy gets seen? <laughs> Wait, Who Framed Roger Rabbit's a good movie. That's a good yeah. movie. Yeah, it is a really good movie. It's another one with a lot movie. of heart. Get out of that that's, chair! That, that's what older movies have. They have heart. They do. You know, they aren't saturated with this kind of xenophobia that we see in modern cinema. Anyway, so if you would like to support the show, 
feedthebadger.com slash support. And if you would like to tell us we're not screaming into the void, feedthebadger.com slash just the tip. You can send us a tip and get the full, we get the full benefit of the fun, whatever funds you send. So that's the best way to get, if you want to send a large amount, that's the best way to do it. And you get the full benefit of not having to dodge and weave through YouTube's minefield of censorship. All right, so that's feedthebadger.com slash support or for supporting the show, feedthebadger.com slash just the tip for sending in um, a tip and a comment. And also I'll add feedthebadger.com slash subscribe if you want to join us in our patron activities and in our patron discord. There is a free section, but a lot of the fun stuff happens in the paid Definitely. section. So yeah. feedthebadger.com slash subscribe for that. All right, back to you, Brian. Okay, well, if you guys like this video, please hit like, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications, leave us a comment, let us know what you guys think about what we talked about. Um, have you looked at the article, and do you want to check out that girl's TikTok, see maybe she's made a video addressing the issue? I don't know, maybe look into it if you want. Um, I would not download the app, though. I mean, I'm not, not intending to have make friends with China, but you could probably watch the videos somewhere. It's on Twitter and stuff. And also, are you interested in this movie, Miller's Girl? I am, actually. I think it is going to be about false allegations, so I'm kind of, like, interested to see how they handle it and if they will actually go into, like, all of the potential damage that a false allegation can do. Now, that would be something. So, anyway, um, and leave us a comment, and uh, please, please, please share this video because sharing is caring. Thanks, guys, for coming on today's episode of the Dating Red Pill Relationships Thing show, and we'll talk to you guys in the next one. Men's right activists are machines, dude, okay? They are literal machines. They are talking point machines. They are impossible to fucking deal with, especially if you have, like, especially if you have, like, a, a couple dudes who have good memory on top of that, too. Holy shit, you're fucked.